feeling a little bit under the weather, disconnected from reality, grappling with the fragility of life in the face of an endless void of death. Me too. And that's why in this edition of Inside, Inside the Autiverse, the Autiverse. We're going to be talking about autism and medication. What happens when you jumble the two up together and try to make them fit? Try to make these neuronormative evil meds fit in with my beautiful autistic brain. Before we get too far into the autism side side of this, let's just let's push it to the side a little bit. Since the ripe old age of about 13 or 14, I have lived with clinical depression, anxiety disorder, and two separate dissociative disorders, most of which have been tackled through the use of psychiatric medication. I started with Prozac, I went on to Sertraline, which was awful. Prozac kind of made me feel like a little bit of a psychopath. Sertraline just ramped up my anxiety to, like, ungodly levels. And Citalopram is the one that I've landed on, one that I can tolerate fairly well. Alongside these SSRIs, these selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, I also take an anti-anxiety drug, something that helps with sleep, something that can stimulate people's appetite as well, but it's also heavily sedating. It kind of evens out the anxiety-producing effects of the SSRIs that I experience and helps to sort of balance myself. It makes me sedated, sure, lots and lots of different side effects, but it balances out and it makes living somewhat tolerable. You may be asking, well, why, why in God's name have my parents, why in God's name have my doctor put me on these really, really strong drugs for, for a kid, you know, a 14 year old child? Well, the thing is, depression is not only something which is invisible, it's not only something that impacts your life, it's also pretty dangerous. Let's talk a little bit about autism. There may be some things that you might be able to draw from my own experience of medication, but I do want to highlight that I am not a medical professional. If you're considering medication, if you're considering supplements, if you're considering any interventions related to mental health, mental illness, please consult a psychiatrist. Please consult a doctor. This is not an extensive list of all of the medications that may be able to impact one's mental state, because I don't feel like I can really talk to that because I don't have any experience with it. Number one, the biggest one, the one, the the thing, the annoying thing that's the bane of my life, the bane of my existence, alexithymia, or at least it was for a long time. Alexithymia is basically the ability to identify, categorize your own emotions, know how you're feeling, basically. I already have difficulties with this as an autistic person, and in fact, a lot of autistic people have difficulties with alexithymia, but it's exacerbated by taking SSRIs. They kind of flatten out my mood profile a little bit. They sort of bring up the lows. They also bring down the highs. That's generally my experience when it comes to SSRIs. If you can imagine somebody who struggles to know how they're feeling, um, especially when they're kind of background emotions and you only really know how you're feeling until it gets like pretty intense and in your face, that taking something that kind of blunts your emotions in that respect can make things a little bit harder to discern. I should feel happy and excited. I don't feel bad. I guess I'm happy? Maybe. <laughs> it also impacts my anhedonia. Anhedonia is basically your level of pleasure that you get from things. The excitement that you feel doing a hobby that you love for seeing a dog and, you know, giving it, smushing its cheeks and giving it, like, giving it a cuddle and putting your hand around it to make it spin around. That kind of feeling, that feeling of joy, that sort of life, the, the spice of life, um, it's just tainted a little bit. It makes those little moments where I would feel good doing something that I enjoy uh, feel almost exactly the same as me doing something that I don't enjoy. Doing a piece of work, I can sort of feel good about myself for doing, but I've I don't really get much enjoyment from doing the things that I would usually do that would give me that sense of pleasure and enjoyment. It's, it, it just feels the same. So I just might as well work. And I know that that's not the best way of going about things, but that's how it feels. It definitely does have an impact on how much I enjoy things in life, how much motivation I have to go and do things that would usually make me feel good, like socializing, talking to people doing activities, seeing, going to new places. Uh, it just feels a lot more bleak, a lot more grey, 
the colors sort of washed out of the beauty in life. The second aspect of medication and autism, which you may have heard about, is the paradoxical reactions. Basically, it's just a fancy way of saying the drug does the opposite of what it's intended to do. Key one that's kind of brought up a lot, or that people sort of cite quite a bit when they, when they talk about these paradoxical reactions, is benzodiazepines. Basically, something that you take that lowers your anxiety. It's this GABAergic type compound. It's very similar to, to alcohol in the way that it interacts with our receptors and sort of relaxes us. And it's supposed to make most people feel relaxed, but for, for some autistic people, it can actually increase your anxiety for some people. I don't know how, it's not something that I've experienced. I find them to be quite helpful, especially if I'm having a lot of panic attacks or if I'm sort of in a, in a pre-meltdown state, sort of helps me sort of quell like the intensity of the meltdown. But although I haven't experienced it in terms of benzos like Valium, I have experienced it when it comes to SSRIs. SSRIs help me a lot with my depression. They ease it. They make me feel a bit more safe in myself. They also increase my anxiety, meaning that I have to use other drugs like metazapine to try and sort of ease off the impact of these serotonergic, these SSRIs on my brain. Doctors or parents should be aware that for some autistic people, having lower doses than average of SSRIs can do a lot of help. And going too high on the SSRIs can cause some pr pretty pretty adverse effects. So this is something to definitely be aware of. Number three, metazapine. Hmm. Metazapine is a, a funny one. Usually people get prescribed it for sleep. Helps me with sleep a lot. It has had a positive impact on my digestion. Pretty much all of my gut problems had stopped because of metazapine. I can handle a lot more sensory input. So my sensory sensitivity is a little bit lower than usual. And also it sedates me enough to ward off anxiety throughout the day that's, that's caused by my SSRIs. In my previous Inside the Autiverse video, I talked about my experience with binge disorder, eating disorders, and metazapine definitely has not helped. When I was younger, I used to be bulimic, whereas in adulthood, I struggled more with binge eating disorder when I went on to metazapine. Combine the appetite stimulant effects and the proclivity for binge eating disorder, as well as interoceptive difficulties that some autistic people have. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> it's not good. I'm not, no word of a lie, this stuff makes me ravenous. The interoceptive aspect of it is not being able to tell that I'm full and not being able to tell that I'm hungry. So I can go for long periods during the day, not eating, and then get to the evening, take my metazapine, appetite skyrockets, and then I eat and eat and eat, but my body doesn't tell me that I'm full. So I continue to eat and eat and eat until I make myself feel sick and make myself feel awful and gross. Another bad thing about this is the sedating aspect of things can really impact my overall executive function because it lowers my general energy levels. It makes my processing slower. It makes me feel foggy. It makes me feel tired all the time. And I have to counteract it weirdly by drinking caffeine. I'm not talking about tea and coffee, I'm talking about like, well I used to, I used to drink a lot of energy drinks, but nowadays I do have the old sneaker Rooney, which I am a, a sponsor for, not a sponsor for, an affiliate for if you want to go check it down in the description. But basically in order for me to get anything done throughout the day and be semi alert, I need to have caffeine. So it's like this, this kind of domino effect when that you see a lot when it comes to medicating human beings. You take one medication for something, the medication has side effects, you take another medication for it, that medication has side effects, you take another medication for that to mitigate those side effects, and it's kind of this like domino effect, and I think that's definitely one of the worst things about being medicated. Just getting rid of the problem or, or lessening the problem that you have, but also presenting a whole host of different problems. And this isn't to mention the worst thing about my experience with metazapine, the thing that a lot of people make fun of me for, mornings. I'm terrible in the mornings. The issue with metazapine is that it's not a, it doesn't only help with sleep, but it is a very, very long-acting medication, so it has a long half-life. So the, the time that it takes to get metazapine out of your system, like 
half of it out of your system is very, very, very long. So when you have it at night time, like I do, to go to sleep, when you wake up, it's still pretty strong in your system. So it feels like you've just gone on like a two day bender. <laughs> you've gone on like a, a two day drinking drinking session in in Malaga. Is Malaga the is Malaga the place? Mallorca? No. <laughs> What's a pie destination that people go to? I've never been to one of those. Although I did go to the Thailand one. But it feels like that every single time that you wake up. And being able to do anything in the morning is hard. And of course, has large effects on different aspects of being autistic. Like I said, executive functioning, processing time. SSRIs increase my anxiety. They also increase my sensory sensitivity. Everything feels a lot more intense. I'm a lot more alert, <laughs> probably due to the anxiety. You know, it's it's something to keep in mind. If you are going on to SSRIs, you might want to take a lot more precautions when going into busy spaces. You might want to get some sensory supports, make some sensory adjustments to your environment. For me, going up on SSRIs in dosage almost always comes with a lot more sensory sensitivity. There's a lot more that psychologists and researchers need to do to understand the differences in the autistic brain, but also how it connects to and how it sort of interplays into pharmacology. I don't like antidepressants. I don't like being medicated. It's not enjoyable. It's not a fun time. It's not an, an easy fix for me. It doesn't fix every, everything. It just makes life a bit more manageable. And with all these effects, do you not think that I'd like to not be on them. Of course I don't want to be on medication. Equally, I do not want to have the mental illnesses that I have, but this is the hand that life has dealt me. These medications can have very real short-term side effects and indeed a lot of long-term consequences, especially when taken in adolescence when your brain is still developing, but equally they save lives, you know, psychotherapy, counselling, things that should work for a lot of youngsters had almost ne negligible effects on my ability to cope with life. There are a lot of things wrong with psychotherapy for autistic people, and it's definitely not an ironed out, evened out thing. In the absence of that psychotherapy, the thing that really helped me the most was developing a sense of meaning, having a focus, having a passion to do outside of just trying to make myself feel better, but also a supportive family who understand me, who listen to me, who trust in my experiences with life, who want to support and help me. And no, for anybody who is a conspiracy theorist, I am not doing a sponsored ad for Big Pharma or anyone like that. This is off my own back and my own experiences. If I can just leave uh, perhaps a little bit of a nugget a little bit of something to follow up for other autistic people out there who are currently medicated, currently experiencing mental illness and not really sure where to go. I'd highly recommend trying to find a neurodivergent psychotherapist, somebody who understands lived autistic experience, somebody who understands the nuances when it comes to psychotherapy that people need to do in order to make it effective. Even just being able to relate to you, being able to understand you, I think can be incredibly value invaluable for a psychotherapist, for someone that you're working with, someone that you know you need to have a high degree of trust and relatability with. But outside of those therapies, psychological wise, a lot of it is pretty hit and miss, if I'm being honest. 